So this is a quick review of the Lapierre Edge 3.9 mountain bike. Uh, I'm fairly new to, to, to cycling, uh, I've come from motorcycles so um, hopefully <laughs> things that I'm sitting on the video are correct but hopefully it might help somebody, I don't know but I am an engineer so um, I can tell if something's well made or not so I'm going to give you my opinion of the, the Edge 3.9. Uh, I got the Lapierre because I have to compare it to other, other bicycles at that sort of price range. I think I paid it's a shade under £600 for this. Um, I felt it was better built, if you like. I, I, I like the suspension. It's a hard tail at the back, but it, it has got suspension on the front. Uh, and it has disc brakes, which are hydraulic or mineral oil or something like that. Um, I'll show you around the, the, the cycle as, as, we, as we talk. So what attracted me to the Lapierre? was uh, initially, I like the finish. I know this sounds a bit silly, possibly, and I know you should look at all the functions of the bike and everything like that, but I actually like the way it looked. I like the finish on the frame. It's a nice matte or satin sort of uh, finish. It, it looks well well done, if you like. All the welds are nice. Oh, it's an aluminium frame. I think it weighs, I might be wrong in saying it's about 13 kilos, so you can carry it around with one hand. Um, and generally it looks it looks good. You know, it's uh, it's it's a good looking bike. Uh, and the second thing was actually the disc brakes. Now as a child riding BMX bicycle, of course the brakes were always a bit of a problem because uh, it was the blocks onto the rims and they would always bind and screech and all this sort of thing. I thought, uh, you know, if I'm coming back to cycling, um, I want something a bit more sort of reliable, you know, and a bit better quality. So I thought, well, I looked at something with disc brakes and I thought, well, it was under 600 quid, disc brakes, hydraulic, uh, they're not the mechanical disc brakes, they are actually hydraulic, so you know, I thought that was pretty good. So yes, I was quite pleased to find that at this price range. Um, I did look around several bike shops and stuff, uh, it, it various different makes, models and all the rest of it, and it, I kept coming back to the Lapierre, so um, you know, it's, it, it's a good looking bicycle. The second thing was actually the suspension, because go, again going back to the old days uh, with solid um, hard frames and stuff, of course, you're getting battered all over the place. So you're going up and down hills and things like that, as you do as a, as a kid. And you're just checking your teeth out. Well, now I'm 45 year old and I want a bit more comfort. So again, I was pleased to find a bike in that price range that um, came with, with pneumatic suspension. Um, it's not the fanciest of systems. Uh, it is fairly basic. But on the top, uh, you can lock the suspension off. So there's a blue knob on the, on the right hand fork. You can twist that and it locks the suspension, so it becomes hard. Great for if you're going down, you know, uh, uh, roads and this sort of thing. Uh, you're losing less energy because you're not bouncing the forks and things as you're riding. Uh, you can release it as you go, you don't have to stop. It's quite easy just to reach down and, and twist twist the, the switch to, to turn that function on and off. Uh, there's also a preload adjustment as well. So on the left hand fork, you can twist that, and that gives you sort of, um, when you sit on the bike, you need a little bit of sag so that uh, as you're going over bumps and things, the suspension can move both up and down um, to give you a full range of movement in the forks. So depending on your weight and what, you know, what you're carrying, like today I'm carrying all the camera gear, so I'm a lot heavier than normal because this camera I'm holding is GH5. It ain't a light camera, it's a big heavy bugger. But, um, so you've got to adjust the sag a little bit or the preload on the forks and, and that just sort of helps with uh, maintaining your, your comfort, I suppose, on the front end. So. Um, and the third uh, thing that I liked about the bike was actually the, um, the quick release wheels because uh, my car, um, <coughs> yeah I know it's, it's probably going, going against uh, being green all that but it is a hybrid but I put the, the cycle into the back of the car and I, I take it to various places um, but I need to take the front wheel off to, get, to be able to fit it into the boot so it is very handy that it has the quick release so all you have to do is twist the knobs a couple of times um, and the wheel pops off and it's dead easy to put the strip back on. It takes two minutes, or well, 30 seconds even, and the front and back comes off absolutely no bother. You have no trouble with the brakes or anything, they all just go straight in. Um, it's no hassle. Um, and now onto the ride. So the ride quality, what's it like to ride? Well, like I say, I'm no expert on, on bicycles and it is quite comfortable. Obviously, you've got the seat issue and things like that, but that's just because I'm new to cycling. But generally, it's it's quite nice. Um, it's a little rattly, I'll have to say. It's more rattly than what I sort of, excuse the flies, it's a little rat more rattly than what I was expecting. Uh, all of the sort of gear change mechanism stuff does tend to sort of bounce, so you get a lot of sort of jiggling noises and things as you, you're going over bumps and what have you. 
but it's never faulted it just you know it, it does what it says on the tin um, the other uh, slight sort of negative I would say is the gear set on it um, there seems to be a lot of sort of overlap between it's got three um, three gears on the front forgive me I don't know the, the correct terms for these like I say I'm new to all this three three sprockets on the front and it's got eight on the back there's a big overlap between first and second gear if you like so uh, that's probably intentional I would have thought but I do find that um, especially if you're in this low strange of gears it's very noisy you get a lot of clicking noises it's as if it's sort of catching somewhere I can't actually see it catching but it does make a lot of sort of mechanical noise which is a, a shame but I suppose you get what you pay for I imagine the better system the, the better gear trains are, uh, are less likely to do that it changes gear fine um, the only sort of issue I've had with it is I know you shouldn't change gear under load, but if you do, sometimes it, it just won't change. Um, <clears throat> if you try to sort of go from sort of second to first or, or first to second, it does tend to sort of um, need you to back off a bit, which is a bit difficult when you're sort of going up a hill like, as you can see behind me, where there is a track going up there. Um, because if you let off, you slow down immediately and, you know, you, you really need to keep on it. Um, so that's, that's a shame, but I think that's probably just down to cost saving on the, on the gear set. Um, other than that the handling uh, it seems good it's very very nimble uh, going around corners things like that like on a day like this where it's been raining um, I have, I've had no issues with it slipping or anything like that uh, not out of what you'd expect at least it goes around corners absolutely fine you can twist it on the penny um, brakes to be honest I think they're brilliant you know you, you pull them the, the limitation is of course the friction in your tyres, it's not so much that the brake won't stop you, it's just how much friction you've got on your, your wheels, on, on the tyres to the road, so um, really can't complain about the brakes, they, they stop you as quick as you need to. In fact they're very good, uh, in my opinion. And then have I found any faults to the bike, anything that I'm not happy with? Um, there's only one thing, just one single thing, that I can really complain about. It's probably something stupid, it's probably down the way it's set up or something like that, but um, I don't know if they're all like this or whether it's just mine, but I do find that the spokes of the front wheel, one of the spokes just clips the back of the caliper. There's very little space between the back of the caliper and the spokes. And as the front wheel's going round, you're getting like the odd click, click, click as, as the rotation of the wheel's going round, which, which is a shame. And I'm sure you could just bend the spoke back or something like that, but um, they all seem very close as if that's more of a design um, issue rather than, you know, one spoke's bent slightly out because they're all within a piece of paper of touching the back of the caliper. The other thing is the, the bolts that go into the caliper, they don't actually go right through. Now being an engineer, of course, when you're threading the hole, um, you know, you'd always sort of uh, take the bolt right the way through or design it so the, the screw would go right through to the end of the mountain. Um, not so on this bike, the, the screw only goes halfway through the threaded hole, so you seem to have a lot of... Um, potential for rot or anything like that in there or even for the thing to strip um, I don't think that'll be too much of a problem I hope but it is something I noticed it's, it's, if I were designing the bike I, I would have done that differently uh, which is a bit of a shame <coughs> and the last thing is the uh, the last thing that I don't like I say I don't like the last thing that I, I suppose I could point my finger at would be um, the plastic quick release knobs on the end of the uh, quick release spindle I prefer them to have been you know uh, aluminium brass steel something other than plastic I'm, I'm not all over plastic um, you know a few years in the sun and all the rest of it I think they'll just go brittle and break so I'd see them being re uh, replaced in the end uh, other than that happy days enjoying it so would I buy it again um, Absolutely, for the price, you know, under 600 quid, it's well equipped, you know, disc brakes, um, it's got, uh, you know, the, the suspension on the front and things, it is a hard tail, but I think for the price, you cannot go wrong, the finish is great, uh, it, it looks really good, you know, I think it looks somewhat like Night Rider, you know, it's got that sort of like uh, dark shadow sort of look to it, which I, I really quite like. Um, I suppose in hindsight you should probably wear some fluorescent gear or something on the roads, which uh, I'm not on the road today, which is why I'm all dressed in all black, but uh, you know, obviously it's a dark coloured bike, so you might want to be careful if you're taking it down the roads. But that's not what it's designed for, it's a mountain bike, so that's probably where you're going to live with it. But uh, yeah, I absolutely would buy it again. Uh, I'll definitely recommend it to people if you're looking for a cheap mountain bike. Uh, I don't think you can go far wrong with a Lapierre 3.9.